Yes, Jesse K. Tat Wizard, this is Hot in Tech. And look, we're just here trying to get on in this internet thing, all right? So today we got something really special. Genius is in the building. It's great to have you guys here. Wanted to know, just to start, like, what's the history here? How did you guys even start Rap Genius Salon? Today is actually the seventh birthday of, uh, of Rap Genius. It was actually... Uh, hey! Actually, it's not. It's neither Genius nor Rap Genius. It was Rap Exegesis. Seven years ago, uh, we had the first line of code. And um, you know, after a few months, changed it to Rap Genius. Then after a few years, changed it to Genius. Um, but it started with just friends who were listening to rap and talking about it like everyone does and talking about you know what was that lyric first of all but you know not only that but what what does that mean um, what's the connection between this and other songs and this is just like you know conversation people have been having for years and years and years and we just got the idea one weekend to try to you know put that online and give people a chance to uh, dissect it and break it down and argue and uh, and put something up that that makes songs more enjoyable to listen to and We've been tweaking it and changing it, improving it, and and doing stuff with it ever since. And now the White House has a genius account, and like, how does it go from there? So yeah, you know, there's a gradual progression of of you know, starting with some rap that we love to then people who who like rap would also like other genres of music, or spoke other foreign languages, or were interested in poetry uh, or the news or whatever. And so people took to this idea of adding knowledge and commentary to stuff. Uh, starting primarily with the with rap music uh, and applying it to so many other things. So you know you started to see political speeches going up, and all all the all the same people, all the same kids would would go and, and start breaking it down. And so eventually people take notice of this, and it's an interesting artifact. And so the White House actually uh, got a bunch of speechwriters who've been involved with the Obama administration over the years, uh, and Joe Biden got on there too, and and some other people who are insiders um, to annotate the State of the Union addresses and keep that on WhiteHouse.gov. So if you go to whitehouse.gov and read those state, state of the union addresses you get some stories and and uh, you know we're proud to power that such a smart partnership seven Thank years you. What, what is that in in internet years like is there like, like so you've been around like a decade two decades we, we were just trying to take down dig you know and like uh, uh <laughs> dig still good dig still good uh google wave was pretty popular at right. the time like it was it was a generation ago like you know snappy snap you know, we were around like several years before yeah. anyone was snapping. So uh, it was a long time ago. Do you guys find it now in 2016 more important because of trap music or what some people are calling the mumble rappers? Yeah, you know, I, I think where we are now with, with music, we're definitely at a point where language is, um, you know, it's not it's as tricky. important to be clear, right? Right. So, you know, take Designer, for example, um, Panda, number one song in the country. Did you really know what he was saying? Like, so we invited him up to Genius and asked him, hey, can you just slowly read the lyrics to Panda so, so we can get it? And, you know, we put it up on the site and, and it took off. We had Kim Kardashian tweeting about, like, thank you. Like, Kim had a snap before. She was like, does anybody know the words to Panda? And we actually answered the question. But, you know, that's Kim. But everybody kind of had that question. Um, and then we recently just partnered with Designer to do the official lyric video for Timmy Turner. Fire. So we released that, thank you, on, on our YouTube channel, and that was the first time that anybody seen the exact lyrics for, for Timmy Turner. So yeah, you know, it's important to come and see lyrics and see what um, rappers and artists are saying. Do you take that, it was like a next level lyric video too though, like it, lyric videos are obviously so popular. Do you take that and put it out on MTV? Like, does this live beyond just YouTube and Genius? It can. Uh, you know, I, I think our goal and is for Genius to be everywhere the music conversation is. Everywhere that music is, there should be a layer and there should be genius to, to come and provide explanation for you. So right now that, that Timmy Turner lyric video lives on the Timmy Turner song page on, on genius.com. It lives on YouTube. A lot of people just go to YouTube just to listen to music. I mean, you know, if MTV, Revolt, BET, who want it? Like, you know, we want to be there too. We want to be everywhere music is. It felt like the next level pop-up video. You know, it actually was a smarter version where it like it explained the lyrics and not just told the lyrics, but it was fun. It felt like a, almost a throwback with a new school twist. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, I, I think in this generation now, to go back to Tad's original comment, is that we are definitely in a place where, where language, you know, the um, designer calls it New English. Mm -hmm. Young Thug has his own style. You know, we don't maybe understand every word that Future is saying, but 
it's always been there. I, I can't sit here and tell you that I knew everything that old Dirty Bastard was saying True. when he dropped his album. I still don't know what Mama Say Mama Mama Makusa means, <laughs> but Michael Jackson, you know, it was lit you killed, you in the hell. 80s. <laughs> right? You know right. what I'm saying? So I think that's always been there. And I think throughout time, no matter what the style of music is, I think there'll always be a place for, for Genius. What do you see has been the biggest correction that Genius has provided with these lyrics? Uh, I mean, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, big difference between Genius. You describe something I think about a lot, which is the big trend on the internet is, is you know, send it off and it disappears. Like Twitter, you can't even find your old tweets, like let alone something like Snapchat or whatever, where it actually goes away. And you know, that alleviates some of the anxiety of creating stuff for the internet. Right. Um, and, and people really can get very prolific with it, which is great, which is great. But at the same time, like we're, we want to build something with all this activity that people are doing all day at their desks, at their schools, in their dorm rooms, whatever. All this activity, when people are being productive, we don't want it just to go down the memory hole. We want to create a lasting resource. So we think of Genius as more like a museum, like an everlasting resource for songs and, and music history and music knowledge. So we've sort of taken the opposite approach, which is to say, you know, if there's some rumor that goes for, you know, a day or two, maybe that even gets up on Genius. Maybe there's a rumor about an artist and how they, you know, something to do with the song and that'll go up. But if that, if that goes away, if that turns out to be corrected days later, that's going to get corrected on Genius. And Genius is, the, is supposed to be, you know, the record um, so that 100 years from now when you're, when you're reading about, uh, you know, future, uh, you're reading about Nas or whatever, um, you're getting stuff straight from the artists and straight from the fans is correct. You're becoming the hip hop dictionary and encyclopedia all in one. Yeah, and, and, and for all the music, you know, yeah. um, hopefully, which is why we went from rap genius to genius. Like, right. you know, Taylor Swift fans come on too and, and you can break down Taylor's lyrics. And, you know, I think Taylor is an incredible uh, um, songwriter, you know, and, and the people that she collaborates with. Um, you know, a lot of subliminals in there. She's something like a rapper. So a lot of that needs a lot of decoding. Um, for me, and to go back to your original question as well, like, you know, I, I think when we spoke to Designer and he told us that the the Panda was actually the BMW, the white X6 with the black tints, that was, you know, re revelatory. Yeah. Um, you know, another one was was Bryson Tiller. Bryson Tiller came to Genius. Um, and Don't. Don't is, is a huge record. And, and if you listen to Don't, it sounds like Bryson is boyfriend number two, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it sounds like He's the other guy trying to get another guy's girl. Right. And when Bryson broke it down for Genius, he said, no. Actually, I was doing My Girl Dirty, mm. and I wrote this song imagining if I was somebody else coming to steal my girl. And it was a reminder for him that he needed to, to treat his girl right. So he, he imagined that, okay, if I keep doing My Girl Dirty, somebody else is going to come and steal her. And these are the things that he's going to say. So he wrote, don't. I wouldn't have known that if, if, if he didn't break it down. And it helped him lock in more female fans, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know that he has much of a problem doing that. You know nah, what, Genius nah, helped. Nah, yeah, nah. we're going to take credit Genius for that. Genius helped him, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the Spotify integration you guys did is really next level, and it's just it works perfectly. Uh, and then you did some tie-ins with Kanye. It almost feels like the living album with Kanye. It just keeps evolving. You can go back and change it on new platforms. Uh, a lot with like what ties into a lot of what you were saying. Do you see partnering with other platforms like an Apple Music or a Tidal as something that would be of interest or something in the plans? Yeah, definitely. I mean, another thing like going a little bit against the trends um, is that, you know, this whole era of exclusives and uh, where everyone's trying to figure out, you know, who, who can own and who can profit off the off the content the most. And, and, you know, it's just not great for the fans. And so, you know, just taking a big step back, we just think like good stuff should get out in front of the biggest audience and then and then figure out how it works. And that's, that's what Rob was saying earlier about like the Timmy Turner lyric video. You know, we want it to be on YouTube, on any video platform, on any music website where people are experiencing Timmy Turner. So you're in Apple Music, or you're in Tidal, or you're in Spotify, you're in Amazon Prime Music or whatever, you should be able to see that, that video. There's no reason you shouldn't, um, but the reason you shouldn't is because there's a lot of people and a lot of companies involved in the music industry. They all have divergent interests, and it's a tale as old as time, but that's why you get sort of uh, uh, messed up outcomes, and you know, every day we're, we're working through that, and we're trying to, trying to break through uh, and make sure that, that money doesn't get in the way of people enjoying culture. It, it is a real treat for the fans, and I, I think it helps the actual service with Spotify. Listen, when you stream a song, right, on any of the platforms, usually you, you'll put your phone in your pocket or you'll go to another app because the only thing to look at on that screen 
is the album art. Yeah. And, you know, Genius, um, with Behind the Lyrics on Spotify, has created a story. So within that three minute and 30 seconds of, of the song's duration, maybe you learned a little something. So you get a little fun facts, you get lyrics, and you get artist commentary. Um, I think it keeps fans engaged. It keeps them in your streaming app, you know, um, because it's something interesting rather than putting your phone in the pocket or going somewhere else. Have you heard about in iOS 10, a new feature coming where if the downloaded song will automatically have the lyrics there, do you feel like that's gonna affect you at all? Or I don't think so. I think there's plenty of room, especially with the video stuff that you guys are now doing. But Lyrics exist elsewhere too. Like you can go to, you can go to other websites and see some lyrics. You know, the, the, the issue is, is it quality? Is it interactive? Is it interesting? So just the basics of, hey, here's the lyrics of the song is very, it's a very valuable thing. Um, what we built is something where the community makes sure that it's it's actually right. So you see the first version of the lyrics, you know, it's not the same as the seventh or eighth or ninth edit because you know people people clean up the formatting, they make sure all the words are right, they make sure it's laid out correctly, and you just can't get that with the sort of top down, like have the interns at, at, at Apple or whatever uh, transcribe the lyrics. Right. So what you find is other websites evolve and they start copying and pasting Genius's lyrics. So, you know, we know we're providing a, a pretty big service to, to the fans by, by getting the right thing out there. I think we're, we're, you know, we do talk to Apple and we work with them too. So, you know, over time, things take everything in technology, as you know, harder than it looks, takes longer than it looks. So to do something that's the real vision of what we want to do, whether it's with Apple or other partners, but with Apple too, you know, it's going to take a lot of time. Like Apple wants to have their users talk to the artists and interact with the artists. And they, they made an attempt at that with Connect. It didn't really work. Yeah, but, um, but you know, the, the way that, that artists and fans can connect is really about the music. And so there's a sort of long-term, you know, product there um, around lyrics, around artists talk, telling stories about songs, fans interacting with that, that you knows where we're going. But shit takes a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think lyrics... To call Genius just a lyrics website or lyrics app is only, I wouldn't even say telling half the story, it's like a quarter of the story. Right. Um, I remember speaking with Alon when, when I first joined Genius about a year ago. It reminds Happy anniversary, me, by the way. Thank you, thank you, my brother, man. It's been, we got it's so much been, more to yeah, do, nah, too. Yeah. Man, but it's been great. Yeah. But it reminds me of when I was in high school and we used to argue about lyrics or talk about lyrics and talk about our favorite artists and who had the hottest lines and what does this mean and so genius to me is like the digital lunch table it's not just lyrics it's the culture around lyrics it's the culture around musical conversation um you know it's like the digital lunchroom table the digital barbershop um and 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 that's a little harder to recreate it's more than just lyrics on the page right it's everything that comes with it so you guys, I want to hear a little about like the consortium of all stars you have behind Genius. You guys recently announced Eminem was an investor, and it sounds like Pharrell is involved, and Nas. We know it's been early. Like, what's it like raising money from Eminem? It's great, and it's Eminem and it's Paul Rosenberg sure. too. So together, and uh, uh, you know, it, ca it really came very organically. It came from Paul gave me a call because he was like, you know, look. He called him Marshall. He's like, Mar Marshall Marshall doesn't really use the internet. Uh, he likes to watch battle rap sometimes uh, with his friends. Um, but he he was on, on Genius, and he was laughing, and he was getting into it, and he was talking about it. And he's, he likes looking at his lyrics. He likes looking at what his fans have to say. And uh, and so he was like, I want to you know, have a conversation about how we, can, how we can do something together. You know, maybe we can do some retrospective on, on Eminem's lyrics and, and, and talk about that. And it, it just, it was a great organic conversation. And that's how it happened with Nas as well. Like Nas was, and I got to give it up to Nas, he was way early on it when it was just very early days, you know, maybe a year and a half, two years old, 2011. And, you know, no artist had really done uh, done anything on Genius except for maybe observe it or, or talk about it. But he was like, I want to get involved. This is, he's like, this is gonna be bigger than Twitter. Like, this is crazy. This is huge. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's it's great to work with artists. It's, it's the, probably the most gratifying part of this whole project is when an artist says you know this is great this makes me feel good about about the art that I put in the world and my fans like that's just the best like two chains when we when we first showed him uh, a few years ago and he was just like he was like emotional he was like this is really cool like I can't believe people take the time to go in like this uh, about my lyrics it's really cool and so th those are some of the, the happiest moments of, of making something like this and, and it's just a joy to, to wake up one morning and see that Eminem has annotated I can't hear my snare right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. from um, what was that I'm cleaning out my closet I, I believe I can't hear my snare and, and really he was like no seriously I couldn't hear my snare the engineer something was wrong 
and then we just wanted to keep that in. And it, it, it was just like, you kind of never know when Anna's going to jump on the site and annotate. And, 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 and so it's always fun, and the genius community like goes crazy. And, and there's different art. Some artists come in and they do it, you know, like around the time they release an album, they'll, they'll do it. And some artists like to just come on for fun and, and do it at random. And it's cool that Eminem is one of the, the many artists who likes to, who just you wake up and, oh, he just threw in like, you know, 10 things. So it's, it's cool. How did you feel about the rumors about Drake versus Eminem? You mean the rumors that were started at hey, Hot 97? Yeah. Rumors <laughs> are rumors, wherever they got started. We know it was a rumor. He brought Eminem out and bowed down like he should have. <laughs> but how did you feel about that? Like the, the the thought of a battle between the current dude that's the top of the the, the chain against the legendary. I I was when I first heard it, I was skeptical. I actually hit Ebro. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so we talked about it. So I was definitely skeptical about this. Just don't add up. But. I think the prospect of seeing the current top guy in, in music right now and, and M, like you gotta understand, M is the most successful battle rap ever. You know, there's, there's a stigma, right? That battle rappers can't transition into making records. Right. But then you have one of the most legendary rappers of all time, Eminem, and the highest selling, actually started as a battle rapper. Right. So even though Drake is on top right now, like M is battle tested. I, you know, I mean, it's without a question, it's, we know who the winner would have been. Right. He knows who the winner would have been. That's why he brought right. him out on stage and bowed down to him. <laughs> I can't say all that, but what I would say is it would have been really interesting. And I, I think, again, with Genius and the community that annotates, like when we have these big major headlining rap battles, like a Drake versus Meek Mill or, or something like that, mm -hmm. they go in. Yep. Those annotations are well thought, well researched. Like they go, and it's, it, it's fun. To, to like observe and hear the battles as they're happening and on Genius and see those um, annotations. Like I, I'll just give you one example that I learned from Genius from one of the community members when Drake did um, Back to Back and he was like, shout out to all my boys, my wife and new. Yeah. And you know, self-edited because we all on the radio. I mean, but um, one of the annotations read, he did that in Nicki Minaj's voice. That was like a Nicki Minaj. Yeah, he way, switched his flow to Nicki's it. flow. So he didn't just say, you know, obviously he was referencing Nicki in that line, his boss, right. wife, you know, and he's trying to discourage me, but he did it with Nicki's flow and Nicki's voice. And I learned that from the Genius community. I got that awesome. on Genius too. What's next for you guys? What's 2017 look like? What, where do you guys want to go? What would be the ideal play for Genius to annotate next? There's so many things. Genius is, a, is like an octopus, you know? Like there's a lot going on, a lot of, a lot of things. But, um, but one big thing is we want to take all of this content that community artists are creating that you know, smart people are going and mining and finding patterns in music and sort of bubble that up and, and, and produce it in ways that more people can see it. So specifically making a lot more videos. So we, you know, there'd be little, little videos that are real entertaining and interesting, like, you know, about here's all the samples on Life of Pablo, for example, just every single sample and then present it in a really smooth, really fast way that you could just enjoy, you know, having that content without having to go onto every song page, read every sample, try to remember that, maybe go to YouTube and play each one, like just bring it, bubble it up and combine it and, and put it in a package. So giving people more knowledge through through video is a big part of what we're doing. And of course, you know, we built this whole thing we haven't talked about, which allows you to annotate anything on the web. So mm. go to Hot 97's website and we can go annotate that by just writing genius.com slash right before the web page address, fire. which wow. is crazy. And, fire. And, and so we're working with you know, Washington Post and LA Times and Boston Globe about doing this around the news and politics. Uh, and people are also doing really interesting uh, takes and starting, you know, discussions. Someone writes an essay on, on the internet and, and someone else takes issue with it and they go in and there's a back and forth that happens in annotation. And so that's that's a, a very different thing, but it's something else we're working on. And, and, and you know, just for me to, to piggyback off what Alan said, um, yeah, the, the video content and, and the editorial content that we're creating, we have um, a new video series come out coming out called Verified, where we get artists to read their lyrics and explain it kind of like what we did with Designer and Pen. It's a, it's a series now. Um, it's going to be great. Um, more lyric videos. Um, and, you know, if I can get one artist to, to annotate. Um, come on, Hove. You know, Need that. You know you got to do it, Hove. Let's go. We got a lot of questions for you. You know, I think that guy one of the great my personal favorite rapper one of the greatest lyricists ever jay-z and genius his book was so good his yeah, book decoded. like almost was the first 
genius breakout. Well, it was the it was the time. It was in the air because we we released it I guess seven years ago today. And I think if you look it up, you'll see that that the seven year anniversary of Dakota will be in a couple months. Mm. Yeah. And so it was, it was something was in the air where people wanted to go deeper into into right. great hip hop lyrics. And Jay, and you know, it was like it was like Jay, uh, Cameron. Um, Eminem, Nas, Biggie, Pac, like these were the, the the sort of central artists that we started with, you know, because it was just a few of us, and we were like, let's let's, let's start with quality, you know, let's yeah. start with what's what's important, and um, and so yeah, Jay Jay would be great if he came along. Could there be a genius coffee book or something like that? I would bring back mm -hmm. that. Same no comment. Mm -hmm. All right. We we learning to know. We yeah. learning to know. So listen, guys, we, this has been great. I've learned a lot. I'm sure that they've learned a lot. Um, we're going to keep our eyes on you uh, moving forward. Really appreciate you coming through and breaking the annotating genius itself for us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks a lot, guys.